This is the second in a series of videos covering the construction of a miniature antique shop. In this video, I'll cover the furnishings and the items displayed on or in the furniture. The third and final video available next week will cover the construction of the shop itself and the remaining decorative items. So let's get started. One of the things that I knew I wanted to include in the antique shop is a column with a bust on it. And so I came up with a template so that you can build a column for yourself. And if you look at the image here, I have this on my blog for you to download and um, use it to understand how to put it together and then also to print um, all of the uh, templates. And so just to walk you through, I give you a template for your top and your base, which are identical and then panels for the sides and then the little decorative panels as well. Now, if you want your, um, your base and your top to be a little bit thicker, which I did, I cut two of each. So if you look here, you can see that I have cut all of the, the three pieces for the, for the uh, top and the base, but I've cut two of each. And so I will glue the duplicates together and then uh, glue them into the, the, the uh, stack. And you can see that next, the stack that uh, creates the top and the bottom, and they're exactly the same size. And then you cut out the four, uh, the four panels and uh, just glue the four panels together and then glue the top on the bottom of the column. And it's just that simple. And now, of course, you can do what you want with your column. I like to use uh, the stone texture spray paint, and that's what I used on this column. And I, it just makes it look more realistic to me. And then for the panels, I decided to do a faux marble technique. Now, I have covered that in a separate video that's just about the faux marbling. So in the description below in this video, I will give you a link to that tutorial if you have not seen that. For the bust of David, I wanted to age it a little bit because it was very white. So I made some tea, um, black tea, and I soaked it. So you just soak it as long as you need to, to get as dark as you want, checking it frequently. Unfortunately, I forgot I was soaking it. So by the time I pulled it out, it was way too dark. And I was trying to figure out, okay, what am I gonna do to lighten this? I tried just soaking in water, hot water, but it really didn't take the stain out. So I got my uh, nail polish remover and tried that and lo and behold, it worked. It allowed me to pull off as much of the dark stain as I wanted to. I don't know if that would work with other materials, but for these, um, this bust and the plaster that it's made out of, it worked beautifully. And just so you know, all the products as usual that I'm using in this tutorial are being carried by Alpha Stamps with the exception of a few things that come from my stash. And so um, they'll have those for, well, a limited amount of time as long as that kind of thing is available. For the table, I started with this unfinished three drawer table. And I, I looked, um, at some pictures of like vintage French desks and got some inspiration from those pictures and so uh, what you see here is my translation of that and the first thing I did is uh, took some balsa wood and cut some additional drawers for the top of the desk and I noticed a lot of the desks had things like this and so uh, balsa wood if you haven't worked with that before it's super simple to cut and um, I actually use a, uh, a saw and miter box. And you can see what that looks like here. It's very inexpensive. And then you can get replacement blades for the saw. Just makes cutting easy. The dimensions of the drawer are one inch deep by three quarters inch high by a half an inch wide. And so that way they, they uh, kind of sit back a little bit from, from the front of the desk. And then to make them look more like drawers, I just took two pieces of uh, chipboard, two small pieces of chipboard, uh, cut those out and put those on the front. Now um, for the top decorative piece and the bottom decorative piece, those are made from a mold. And I just used um, uh, polymer clay and I used one of the designs on the mold for the top and one for the bottom. The design I chose for the top works really nicely because it, easily fits in between the two sets of drawers. I did trim off a little bit of the edges just to make it a really nice snug fit. And if you have some heavy scissors, you can, it's easy to do that. Um, and then you can sand it to make it, make it fit in very tightly. And the other one, I just glued on the bottom. I didn't have to make any adjustments to that at all. And then I painted everything this French blue. 
um, and then added gold accents to various parts of the uh, of the design at the top and the bottom and then of course on the table itself and then I painted some of the white on but I also wanted white designs on uh, the drawers and other places the sides and whatnot of, of the desk so what I did is I used stickers but the stickers that I had that would fit really well were not white they were black so I painted them um, I put a few very thin coats of paint on them so that I could still lift the sticker up off of the, the sheet that it comes on and then apply them to the desk. And then once I had applied them, I went back in and added more paint and, and just made sure that they were, you know, everything, the black was completely painted over. And one tip when you're painting really small things, um, if, if you've got something little like this, what you might want to do is instead of using a brush, use a, a toothpick, the edge of a toothpick to apply your paint. That way you can get into really tiny places and not over paint. Um, and so that's how I ended up doing that. And then to the, the decorative piece at the top, I added a piece of filigree that I just kind of bent to go around the center. And then I added at the bottom, I added um, uh, some drawer pulls that you can see, two different ones on the sides and one in the center. And then for the small drawers that I added on the top, I just used uh, four flat back beads to complete the whole table. For the sideboard, um, I'm continuing with the French antique theme, and uh, this was actually meant to be a counter in a shop, but this worked particularly well because you'll be seeing in the third version of the video that um, I need a place to hide all of the switches and batteries for the lights on the outside of the shop, and the back of this counter is open, so that way I have a place to hide all that and I can put this against the wall and hide it and then just pull it out and turn on my switches and put it back. So in terms of the decor, um, I started by painting this pink and then I went over it with um, a dark wax. Now I do a lot of furniture painting so I just happen to have the Annie Sloan dark wax. I mean you could use any wax and you could even use shoe polish. And I just apply this with my finger. I, I wear a pair of rubber gloves and apply it with my finger and just have a soft cloth uh, with you so that you can wipe off the excess and that way not only can you wipe off the excess but you can kind of smooth it around and and spread it out and kind of get it how you want it how dark and how light and then once I did that and let that dry then I um, I added some uh, Dresden uh, strips to the top the front and each of the sides and then I had these uh, oval Dresden frames in my stash and I use that to frame some images and those images come from a new collage sheet of mine. The new sheet is just a whole bunch of decorative vintage panels. You could use this on furniture like I did. You'll see me use it on the bookcase as well. Um, you could use it on walls. You could frame it. Um, just lots of uses that you can you could do with it. You could make a screen, a folding screen with it. So they're just some really pretty uh, decorative um, vintage pa painted panels. And for the final touch, I just used a couple of gold leafy stickers from my stash to dress the top up just a little bit. The vintage suitcases is probably one of my favorite things in the shop. And uh, one of the things I like about it is there is a product called Craftex. And if you're not familiar with it, it, it almost, it's almost like uh, fabric. So it is a paper product. Uh, you can sew it according to the manufacturer's uh, information. I've never tried to sew it. But it has this really neat texture on it that kind of looks like leather. And then if you do some other things to it, then you can make it even look more like leather and uh, even a vintage leather look. The base of the suitcase are just a die cut chipboard uh, kits. So it's very easy to just put the basic um, suitcase together. And that's what I did. I, I, I put the suitcase together, glued all the, the pieces together, and then I covered it with the Craftex paper. And the next thing I did is I used a product uh, from Ranger that is a crackle paint product. And the reason I like their crackle paint product is it's kind of made to do small projects. So you know, if you buy just general crackle paint, it's going to give you big cracks. Whereas when I'm looking, working with something this small, the miniature, I need like really tiny little cracks. So basically that's what I did. I painted the craft text paper with the crackle paint. So that took the texture that already kind of looked like uh, faux leather 
and made it even more uh, like leather and, and like an aged, really cracked leather. And then to get the darker color and the differences in shades, I um, took the, um, the Ranger Distressed Ink and I used on the brown suitcase, I used the Vintage Photo. And I just rubbed that all over the suitcase and that uh, with, a little, with a little sponge, piece of sponge that I used. Then you can buy the, the sponge sheets if you're not used to working with those and you just cut away the amount that you need. And just a little, just a little bitty square, and then you, I have one for each color of ink pad, and rub it on your ink pad, and then rub it on wherever you want to apply it to. So that's what gave me the really old look. And so the crackle paint is just slightly shiny, so it gives you that that shine that you see, a little bit of shine that you see on leather, and then it also makes that uh, the crackles that I added pop out more. And then for um, the black, I again put the crackle on, and then um, I, I used the crackle or the uh, black, the Ranger black soot um, distress ink on that. And then after all that dried, I used the craft text paper to cut strips to be the binding or the uh, to close the, the binding straps to close the suitcases. And so I chose the black. Now I didn't do anything to that. I left it like it is, so it's very matte. I used the black for the brown suitcase. And then the pack has several different colors in it. And it's got kind of a gray color. So I used that for the bottom. And then I had all these little cute accessories to put the metal pieces on this for the corners and these L pieces on the sides. And then of course the, the lock on the front. And then I've got these cute little um, uh, buckles on each one. And they were a brass color, which was great for the top suitcase. But the bottom one, I ended up painting those silver to make everything go. And, and if you notice, there's a difference, there's a brass the, the hardware on the top is brass, the uh, hardware on the bottom is silver, and that's just because I used a, a metallic silver rub to, um, to change the brass ones to silver for the black suitcase. And I thought I'd just throw this picture in. This is uh, one of the first times I ever used the Craft Tax paper, and I was doing an older project called Animals on Safari. I kind of flipped the script, and the animals are the actual ones on Safari, and the people are the ones in the wild. And I made this travel trunk, and it's it's a little bit darker uh, color than what I've done here on these suitcases. But you, it gives you an idea of what you can do, and, and you can see how you, with the same technique I've just used, um, how cool of a leather uh, vintage look that you can get. I used various stools to uh, display some of the items in the antique shop. And this first one, um, these were just wood, unfinished wood stools that I, I sprayed with stain. And what I like to do to make it easy to stain things is I take the reinkers that go with the distressed ink pads and put that in a spray bottle with some water. And the more water you put, the more you're going to dilute it. And then I just spray the furniture. And that way, you know, I can control how dark it gets and, and I don't have to worry about all these little nooks and crannies. And especially if you're going to look like more of a rustic look and not, you know, really well finished, but these, I needed them to be old and, and it not to be perfect. So uh, I just put them in a box so it doesn't go all over the place and uh, use my spray thing and uh, my spray bottle and just keep spraying it on and turning it around and then keep doing it until I get it to the darkness that I want. And on the top of this one is this really cute desktop book stand. And the the basic part of the book stand is a kit, just like with the suitcases. It's a die cut chipboard kit that you put together. And then along with that is a collage sheet that Alpha Stamps has. This is not mine, this is one of theirs, um, that fits this. So you get different choices of different woods and styles and it's, uh, they're all designed to fit perfectly on this little die kit, uh, cut kit. And then, uh, so I put that together and I put a couple of uh, brass knobs, poles on the front, which you know, made it more, look more dimensional and real. And then inside is a set of books. And I, the, books the book covers come from uh, a new collage sheet that I have that is miniature books on it. It's filled with miniature books, cut various sizes. And uh, you can just cut those out, and then I just cut pieces of paper that are the size of the book and just glue them together to fill the inside of the book. And down below, um, you just see a couple of uh, metal pieces. It's the, in the middle of this glass, little glass thing, it's a candle holder, and the candle inside is polymer clay. 
and inside the, uh, I'm sorry, not inside, below the glass, uh, the stand is made out of a bead cap at the very bottom and a crown, a brass crown turned upside down. And you'll see me uh, use that again in, uh, on one of the other items. On uh, the other stool, this is the taller of the two, I'm using another bust. And I took a piece of vintage lace and draped that over the side of it. And then down below where I had the little um, candle holder on the other one, I've just put a bunch more of the books. The Victorian table is made out of kit. Uh, the table itself is plastic and it just comes with a top and a, a uh, decorative ridge around the top, lip around the top, and then two legs that slide into each other and glue up into the top. Super simple. And to jazz it up, I painted the legs gold. And then I also used a piece of filigree, which I bent, so it's curled around the edges of the table. And I also painted it the same color gold as the legs, even though it was already gold, just so that they would match. And on the top of that is a silver tea set, and it comes exactly like that. And it's, it's really pretty. I am surprised at how, um, how silver it actually looks. And it's heavy. The metal is very heavy. So it just was a beautiful thing to put on top of that table. One of the things I thought would be fun to include is a ladder. You see a lot of uh, decor using ladders and, and putting things on the steps of the ladder. In this case, I am hanging what is vintage say tablecloths, lace, and things like that. So I basically painted this white and then just scratched it up and used a blade on it to scratch some pieces out of it and um, sandpaper to sand it. So it just looked a little bit more distressed. Displayed on the furniture and in the bookcase are various plates. And these were all plastic. I've got some different sizes, um, different shapes, and I have a uh, couple of new collage sheets for this. Uh, one of them has 39 unique patterns of plates and you get five different sizes of each pattern. So if you're looking to do something like this antique shop where you're not looking to do a whole bunch of place settings at a table, then this works best. But then I also have two more that um, have full place settings. So if you're doing a tablescape, you can do four, well the sheet contains four, uh, place settings for the different size dishes in each place setting and of course if you print the sheet more than once you can have more place settings so that would you would use that perhaps if you were like I said setting a table of some kind and then um, the images can fit on the bigger plates the salad plates the the uh, coffee cups whatever tea cups that's why I have all the different sizes and there's a couple of oval ones in there too for for an oval plate or platter I also use the images on bowls and, and made covered bowls or open bowls with these as well as on stands. And I use the images on those as well. And then um, you'll see that a lot of them are, are, I painted them because these were all just white plates of various sizes. And I use patina paints for the most part. And the reason I did is patina paints look very, very um, glossy and they are made for non-porous. Uh, things so you know they they originally came out for for metal you know to paint jewelry but anything that's non-porous and of course plastic isn't they work really well on that and then I also you can use a sticker as well and then I also used some of this very very fine thin thin uh, strip of gold tape and so that was perfect for all these little bitty things that I was making I've used all kinds of accessories in the shop and it would take me forever to go through all of them. Uh, you can see them in the detailed pictures and they'll also be on the supply list on my blog post for this particular project. But I'll point out a few uh, of my favorites. The one is the uh, horse and I use quite a bit of a cast metal, which is silver. Um, and sometimes it'll have little ridges or little bumps on it that, that you need to sand off, but it's pretty easy to sand it off the metal before you paint it. And again, I've used the patina paints, and in this case, I've used a bronze patina paint to make the, the horse really look like a real bronze statue. And another one is the camera. Um, that's one of my favorites. Again, I used the patina paint, but I also use the craft text on the middle part, the accordion part that's fabric. Or supposed to be fabric. I use the craft text on that and just wrap strips of that around it. And then here you see an urn. Again, it was silver and I painted it with um, with a copper patina paint. And then I have some cream paints that are that are um, 
that are very uh, shiny and I went over it with a brown so that way I could dull that that bright copper not go all the way to bronze but have more of a copper look but more of a antiqued copper the bookcase was probably the most complicated thing that I worked on and I like the other uh, pieces I used a, um, a kit that uh, die cut chipboard kit for the basic uh, bookcase uh, form and then I used um, balsa wood and some chipboard to create all of the um, detail that you see on the outside and so my strategy was basically to make more of a base on the bottom more of a base on the top and then give it some decorative panels on the sides so I started by assembling the kit and then once I'd done that I painted it green and then I rubbed the wax on it just like the dark wax, the Annie Sloan, just like I had done for the other piece. And then I wanted to do um, the, it, uh, the wood on the inside, the wood paneling. And to do that, I cut some paper that had a wood pattern on it into strips. And then I applied those strips to pieces of paper, just blank paper, that were cut the exact size of the inside of the bookcase. Now, I will tell you that not every opening in that bookcase is exactly the same size, so you need to measure them. I believe two are one size and two are another. One, two are slightly bigger than the other. And I only did three of them because the bottom is going to be solid to look like a drawer. So I glued those strips onto the white pieces of paper, trimmed it down to the white uh, piece of paper, and then I glued those inside the bookcase. Now, I wanted to do it now as opposed to later because once I put the front paneling on, it'll be harder to get inside there. And that's also the reason why I went ahead and painted and stained the base piece because as I work on it, it'd be harder to get into the inside of that um, to, to, to do the painting and staining, or rather painting and waxing. Next, I want to fill in the bottom shelf to, to make that a drawer. So I cut a piece of balsa wood. Um, it doesn't really matter the thickness and uh, glued that in place. And the size of it was three and a quarter by one and a half just make sure that you make it thick enough that um, you can you can get it glued in, in there and um, of course you can always use chipboard instead so if you don't have the balsa wood or you don't like working with it just use chipboard and now we need to create uh, some framing around that base at the bottom and also to add some height so I cut another piece which is for the bottom is three and a half by one and a half and it is one fourth inch thick so basically we're just going to make that that uh, bookcase taller so it's exactly the size of the bottom of the bookcase it's just adds another uh, fourth of an inch so now we need pieces to go on the base that are going to make it wider and so i cut two pieces that were one and one half inch long and then two pieces that were three fourths inches long and then these were a quarter thick, just like the, the base that we, that we cut. And now I glue the bottom panels, one on the side, then one on the front, and then on the other, other side and on the front. And so you can see what that looks like. And then I want to add a trim piece to that. And you'll just want to cut your trim piece. I, I basically just laid it down and marked it um, to, to cover the side, the front of the side, then back down, and then the front of the bookcase, and then to, around to the other side. So I just laid it on there, marked it, and then cut it. And of course, for all this cutting, I used the saw and uh, miter kit that I showed you earlier. To make the grooved panels on the front, I cut two pieces of balsa wood. It's the same thickness as the other balsa wood that I've cut before for the base. Each piece is seven and three-fourths inch long. And next, after I cut that, I need to mark up the pieces of wood so that I can uh, in, uh, put grooves in there with a stylus. So as you see from this picture, I have created lines at the top and the bottom of each piece. And that those lines are to make sure that I don't go past that when I um, use the stylus to make the grooves. And then on each side of those lines, you see two circles. So I used a circle template um, to make those two circles and I'll be indenting those two to make kind of what a simple rosette. And then I divided up the, uh, the piece of uh, balsa wood into uh, sections, three sections, and that's where the lines are going to go. 
Now, in order to do this, uh, you need to either use a stylus or you could even use a pencil. This wood is so soft, you barely touch it and you can make an indentation. And to make sure that I stay on the line that I have drawn, I use a ruler and leave it in place. And you want the ruler to be slightly off of the line because if you put it right on the line, when you run the stylus down that groove, it's gonna end up being on the other side of the line. So you wanna start at the top where, there's, where the top line is and you wanna take your stylus and just lightly push it into the wood and pull it all the way down to the bottom line. And you can always go in and do it some more. Just don't do it too much because this, this stuff is like butter. And I would just go along and do each one. And then to do the top, you just take your stylus or pencil. I guess you could even use a pen um, and just go around it, the circle with, your, um, with the stylus and make the indentation for that. So once you've made all your grooves, the circles and the lines, then you're going to glue that to the front of the bookcase. Now you're going to glue it flush with the side. So that means it's going to extend a little bit over the opening of the bookcase. So now you can see why I did all the inside work. In fact, I went ahead and uh, glued a lot of the items that were gonna go in there before I put uh, those fronts on because that way I wasn't in, you know, trying to get in there and, and, and not, didn't have enough room to work to put in all the little tchotchkes that I had inside the bookcase. So now we need to focus on the very top. So we're gonna do something similar as we did to the bottom, except we're gonna have some other cooler elements. Now on the top to make the front panels flush with the side of the bookcase, those panels are higher than the bookcase, I need another piece of wood and it's exactly the same size as the piece of wood that we did for the bottom. So it's the one and one half inch by three quarters inch. And um, it's the same wood, same thickness, and that gets glued on the top of the bookcase behind that panel. On the top, I added a cornice, and I created a template so that that cornice would perfectly fit at the top of those panels in the front and give, give us the cornice shape. And I used, in this case, instead of the balsa wood, I used layers of chipboard. And so I placed my stencil or my template, which I have that for you on my blog that you can download. Um, I placed that on chipboard and just cut layers of that. And I made two of those for each side. And then I found it was easier if you glued them together because you're gonna glue them together at an angle first before putting them on top of that panel. So you can see here a picture of how I have, I have glued those two together. And the, the part of the cornice that you're going to see from the front of the bookcase, you want that to be in front and then you want the other piece on the side so that you don't have the seam uh, from the front, you don't see that seam. And so you see two views of it here. You see it kind of looking at it, facing it, and then you can see it from on top to give you a better idea. And then you're going to glue that to the very front on top of the panels. Now, once we get the glued, the cornice is glued on top of that, then we're gonna have a gap between the cornice and the back of the bookcase. So we need another piece of balsa wood. And the easiest way to cut that is to um, is to use the template itself to give you the right angle because you've got you've got that cornice with an angle now you need the piece of wood to have that angle so I actually used that to create that angle I put it in place and then I marked it on the back so I know when it was flush with the back of the bookcase and so that gave me that special piece that goes in there I didn't worry about filling in the 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 uh, the top and the back of everything that I was doing because this thing is going to be in the back on a wall and you really don't see it and there was no reason to do a whole bunch of extra work to fill it in. It was more about the facade and making it look the way I wanted it to look. Just like with the bottom, I went ahead and added some decorative trim around the sides and through the front. Now I need a piece of wood at the top and that's where I'm gonna put the decorative elements on that goes um, behind the uh, the uh, cornices and that piece of wood is just three inches by one inch and it doesn't matter the thickness it's kind of like when we filled in the drawer area it really doesn't matter it just needs to be up there so that I have some place to to glue those uh, decorative elements at the top just like with the um, desk that I did I used the mold again to make two 
uh, filigree or uh, not filigree, but swirl leaf kind of swirl pieces that I put on the top. And then the little medallion thing in the center is just a piece of metal that I had. And once I got all that on, then I went through and did the same kind of painting as I did for the inside of the bookcase and the outside of just the basic bookcase. I went and did the green and then I do the wax over that. The last thing I did is do a trim on the drawer and add a piece of metal hardware to be the pull. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. You'll find pictures, the supply list, info on the new collage sheets and templates for the column in the book case cornice on my blog post. And I will have a link to that in the description below. Next weekend, I'll be posting the final video, which will cover the construction and remaining decorative items.